YouTube friends, smash like and subscribe as we delve into the week's basic, biggest transfer story. So, you know what, I'll do that again. Hello and welcome, YouTube friends, smash like and subscribe as we delve into the week's biggest transfer stories. Paolo Dybala finds a new home, so too does Matisse De Ligt, but the pair's old teammate, Cristiano Ronaldo, may have to settle for the home that he already has. Barcelona still remain at the centre of the transfer window universe, and the transactions continue between Premier League rivals. I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by the man of the season, Fabrizio Romano, to make sense of it all. Que Golasso begins right now. Fab, great to be back with you. How are you doing, my friend? Hey, my friend. All good. All good. Thank you. Nice to be here as always. And uh, thanks to all the guys sending questions. Likewise, delighted to have you on. Well, today's Que Golasso episode is presented by Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. And for those who don't like to sweat, the choice is clear. Gillette is your ticket to all-day freshness. Gillette, the best a man can get. So, Fab, let's start with Cristiano Ronaldo. There was an interesting rumor that popped up the other day about a return to sporting. First of all, any truth in this? I know that a lot of the romantics in the footballing world would love to believe this. Yes, I know it's so romantic, but at the same point, as Cristiano mentioned in some of his comments uh, on, on Instagram yesterday night, there is nothing at the moment. Of course, Cristiano is a big fan of sporting, and I think there is a chance one day it will happen that Cristiano will come back to sporting. Uh, his mother is still with a fantastic relationship with the club, always following sporting. So... The link between Cristiano and Sporting is natural, but at the moment there is absolutely nothing between Cristiano Ronaldo and Sporting to rejoin the club this summer. Cristiano has different plans, uh, and so let's see what happens with all the possibilities that Jorge Mendes is trying to find for, uh, for Cristiano. We know that Manchester United are really trying to change his mind. Derek Ten Hag is waiting to have a meeting with Cristiano once he will join again the team to understand if there is a chance to change the situation to keep Cristiano Ronaldo at Manchester United. At the same point, Jorge Mendes, his agent, is trying and trying around Europe to find solutions for uh, for Cristiano Ronaldo. So the situation at the moment is still in standby, but still with the same idea for, uh, for Cristiano to leave Manchester United this summer. And let's see what happens. But what I'm told is that at the moment with Sporting, there is absolutely nothing. Are we reaching a point yet where Mendes has maybe run out of options for, for CR7? I think no, I think no. He's always exploring. It's normal to have moments in the market, I think. And in this moment, it's pretty clear that in a, on a public point of view, because these are the statements, uh, Chelsea, Bayern, the messages are pretty clear. They are not interested at the moment in going for, for Cristiano Ronaldo. But I say moments because in the market, things can change, not just for these two clubs, but maybe for, for other clubs. Uh, it depends on the domino of the strikers. It depends on what happens with some of the strategy, some of the departures into these clubs. So there are many, many points. And this is why Jorge Mendes is used to waiting some time uh, before uh, moving his players. St. Cristiano Ronaldo last summer was close to join Manchester City and then he joined Manchester United in 24 hours. So, And it happened on 28, 27 of, of August. So we know how things can change really fast in the transfer market. And so at the moment, everything seems to be pretty quiet, but I'm sure that Jorge Mendes will push and push again until the end. Oh, United are starting to enjoy, you know, a bit of joy now in the transfer market, but they had been frustrated up until then with a number of their targets and pursuits. How is the situation of Cristiano affecting United's transfer plans right now? Of course, when you have a player like Cristiano Ronaldo uh, who wants to leave the club, uh, is affecting the timing of some of the signings. Because, for example, Manchester United wanted to sign a striker. It was public with Ralf Ragnick, who said many times, we'll go for a new striker, we will go for a striker. You could create competition to Cristiano Ronaldo or maybe play together with Cristiano Ronaldo in some moments. And then what happened is that with Cristiano now uh, trying to find a way to, to leave the club, it could be different for Manchester United. Maybe they will need a starter and not just a young striker to create competition to Cristiano. So there are many, many of these points uh, to, to consider. And it's normal that when you have a star like Cristiano Ronaldo who wants to leave, timing of the signings could be could be different. But I think now they are a good point. They signed Malasia, Eriksen, uh, of course, Lisandro Martinez during the weekend. They are still working to do something in the midfield and they will do something in the midfield. Let's see what happens with Frankie de Jong at the moment. Still, same situation, but Man United will go for a midfielder this summer. So 
they have to go step by step. This is the mission. This is what Eric Ten Hag wanted. Let me say that, in particular, the last signing, Lisandro Martinez, is a good message to the manager because Eric Ten Hag really wanted Martinez and it was not easy because Arsenal were in the mix. It was not an easy negotiation with Ajax and at the end, they did it. So now it's step by step, but I'm sure that Manchester United will get what they want. Yeah, so let's uh, stick with the theme of somebody who's taken their time to, to find their landing spot. Paolo Dybala, somebody who's been linked with a number of teams this summer. Roma finally emerging uh, as his uh, new destination. Let's just take it back to the beginning on what happened with the Inter interest exactly, because coming into this summer window, it seemed nailed on uh, like uh, Dybala was going to sign for the Nerazzurri. Yes, it was close, but never done because Dybala had negotiations with Inter. Uh, let me clarify the Inter CEO Marotta is the same director who was at Juventus when they signed Dybala from Palermo. And so they had a very good connection and they wanted, Inter wanted to sign Paolo Dybala. Then what happened? They, need, they had to make a choice because it was impossible for Inter at the same moment to sign both Romero Lukaku and Paolo Dybala on the market because of their salary and many other points on a financial point of view. And so they decided to go immediately for, uh, for Romero Lukaku. And then they had to sell players if they wanted to sign, to sign Paolo Dybala. And it means maybe Edin Dzeko, maybe Joaquin Correa, maybe Alexis Sanchez. It didn't happen because at the moment all these players are still uh, under contract with Inter. And so this is why Paulo Dybala was waiting and waiting. But at the end, everything was in standby with Inter. So he decided to discuss with other clubs. We said here many times that his agents had discussions around Europe with many clubs. They tried to discuss with Manchester United, with other English and Spanish clubs. But there was no agreement and nothing even close between Dybala and some of these clubs. And then Roma, in a few days, in a few weeks, were able to change his mind because Jose Mourinho, together with the sport director Tiago Pinto, they were pushing with Paolo. They wanted to explain to Paolo the project of Roma to have him like the face of the new Roma project. And let me say that this is an historical signing for Roma. This is a fantastic, fantastic deal. An incredible player who is joining Roma on a free. So congrats to Roma. And I think congrats to Jose Mourinho because without Jose Mourinho, I think there were few chances to see Paulo Dybala joining Roma. Now, with Dybala joining Roma uh, and having been unexpected, say, six weeks ago, is there the possibility that this has now changed Roma's transfer plans for, for this summer? I know there's already been a lot of speculation about Zaniolo. Yes, we have to see what happens with Zaniolo because uh, Juventus have always been interested. But at the moment, Juventus are focused on the centre-back because they sold Matthijs the league to Bayer during the weekend. The deal was completed yesterday night uh, for 70 million euros plus 10 million euros in add-ons. So Matthijs de Ligt will be a new Bayern player this week. And this is why Juventus, after losing Giorgio Chiellini and now Matthijs de Ligt, they need to focus on the defense even because they signed Paul Pogba as new midfielder. And of course, Angel Di Maria together with Chiesa and Blauvic. So the attacking positions are uh, more than covered. They have a fantastic team in that positions, but now they need to rebuild the defense. And so they will be pretty busy with the centre-back. And then we will see what happens with Zaniolo. At the moment, Zaniolo is still... Roma player, still really relaxed with Roma. Roma want to extend this contract. This is the point. So we have to see if they will be able to reach an agreement to extend the contract. But I think when you sign a player like Paolo Dybala, the whole atmosphere around the team is completely different. In Roma, they are more than excited now. It's one of the best signings in the history of the club. And so this is why I think the atmosphere now around the team is, is completely different. Yeah, you mentioned uh, De Ligt joining Bayern. What does this mean for Chris Richards' future uh, with the Germans? I think he has chances to leave. He has chances to leave. It's something that they already discussed internally. Now, uh, of course, they're focused on, on completing this deal with Juventus, uh, with Matthijs De Ligt to sign a, a five-year deal. So they are still preparing the contracts and then they will have to complete everything with the medical, the world process. And then they will decide where Chris Richards is going. But my expectation is for him to, to go this summer. So we will see what's next because we know the timing at Bayern depends on the, on the new signings that they want to do. But at the moment, this is the, the idea for Richards. Yeah, and with uh, Lewandowski leaving for Barca as well, I guess there was a sense of inevitability around the club that that was going to happen at some point, given his declarations over the past few months. Yes, yes, yes. I think... Uh, this story explains one more time that um, I say to all the fans that are texting us in the in the chat and watching us that 
guys you should never trust what directors or managers say during the transfer market because many times they say something and then the reality is different the player is always the one who decides and robert Lewandowski since end of february decided to leave Bayern and to try something different with barcelona and so it took some time to find an agreement on a financial point of view between barcelona and Bayern. but at the end the expectation internally at Bayern and also with the manager julian agresman it's always been for uh, for robert Lewandowski to leave when a top player like Lewandowski respects player like Lewandowski internally at Bayern and by the fans wants to go you just have to to do what he wants to find a financial agreement because this is right for Bayern but I think this was absolutely part of the plan well let's uh, take a quick break now the soccer calendar knows no breaks so it's always all systems go here on K Golas so staying on top of the global game is an all-day gig then there's the added stress of being a helplessly loyal fan, obsessing over every minor detail concerning my club, the mighty Aston Villa. Throw in on top of that the studio lights, public speaking, breaking news. It's a recipe for perspiration, especially at this time of the year. But not, uh, not for yours truly. Fortunately for me, sweat and bad odors are two things I never have to worry about. And thanks to the long lasting power of Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant, I can get on with my day, which mainly involves staying on top of the latest Aston Villa news and telling myself it's strictly for work purposes without breaking a sweat. Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant goes on with an anti-white mark formula and protects your nostrils from those nasty under armpit smells while giving you 72 hour sweat protection. And if you want all day freshness, the choice is clear. Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant is a tap in. CTA, get your Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant at a store near you. Well, let's uh, stay with Lewandowski for a moment and we'll switch the attention now to Barcelona Fab. So Barca have tied up the, the Lewandowski deal. Sort of what have the last 24 to 48 hours been like uh, sort of following uh, on, uh, on, on the trail of that? It was the most talked about transfer, I think, so far this summer. Yes, I think the key day has been Friday because all the parties have been in direct contact. Barcelona board, Barcelona president Juan Laporta, who in this story has been really important because of his relationship with Pini Zahavi, who is the super agent of Lewandowski. They are big friends since long time. And so they found an agreement end of February, beginning of March on the contract of Robert Lewandowski, a three-year deal with an option for further season. So this is how this deal was built between Barcelona and, uh, and Lewandowski, Barcelona and Pini Zahavi. And then last Friday, they had this direct contact with Bayern. It was a long conversation during the morning, the afternoon to find a way. And then they found an agreement, 45 million euros plus 5 million euros in add-ons. So exactly what Bayern wanted, 50 million euros fee for, uh, for Robert Lewandowski. The player asked Bayern again and again to go because he just wanted to try something different. He wanted to join Barcelona. And so I think it was just a matter of time. And then during the weekend, of course, Robert Lewandowski uh, so fled to, to, to Miami. Everything is now completed. He's been announced as new Barcelona player. He's signing a contract of three years. We're waiting for his uh, first words as Barcelona player in the coming hours. So it's just a matter of time. And then uh, he will have the chance to meet with Xavi once he will be back uh, in the USA with the team. And so congrats to Barcelona, I think, because this is an historical signing, one of the best number nine in Europe in the last 20, 30 years. Now there is a big chance for Barca to have a new proper number nine for next season. And Frankie Dion, what's the, the update on, uh, on his future at the moment? Still the same situation. It's always the same. I'm sorry for Manchester United fans and Barcelona fans, but uh, at the moment it's still the same. They have an agreement, Manchester United and Barcelona, uh, 75 million euros plus 10 million euros in add-ons. So between clubs, everything is fine, but not yet on player side because Frankie at the moment doesn't want to leave Barca. He wants to continue at Barca. He wants to stay at Barcelona. So Man United are still there. They are still fighting and try till the end to find a solution because they want Frankie the Young, as we know. But at the same point, Frankie, as of now, while we're speaking, he is not accepted and still no green light on player side. So let's see if Man United will be able to change the situation, to change his mind and find an agreement, or if Frankie will continue his position. And as of today, on Monday, the position is always the same. He wants to stay in Barcelona. From one Dutch star in Barcelona to another, Memphis Depay. How disposable is he uh, at Barca at this moment in time? And are there any suitors potentially looking at him this summer? Yes, I'm curious to see what happens with clubs because at the moment there is still nothing advanced between Memphis and any club. Many clubs asking, but Memphis will only accept top clubs, important clubs. So this is the idea on player side from what I'm told. Last week there was a meeting between Memphis and Barcelona and they told him that Xavi will be ready to count on him in case he decides to stay at Barcelona. 
but obviously with uh, Ferran Torres, San Sufati, Obama Young, Lewandowski, Rafinha, uh, and, uh, and of course Usman Dembele, many top players they have, they told clearly to to Memphis Depay that game time will not go in, will not be so much and so it's normal for, for Memphis to understand the situation. Now it's up to him. Now it's up to him because Barcelona are open to letting go if he will bring a good proposal. And so Memphis will now decide. We'll think together with his family, with his agents. But I think there are chances for him to, Bar- to, to leave Barcelona this summer. It depends on the proposals because he will only accept really important clubs. But there are chances for Memphis to go. We've talked about one USMNT star in uh, Chris Richards. Now, Sergio, Serginho Dest, is, is he safe at the moment at Barca? At the moment, I would say yes. He wants to stay. He was pretty clear also in the last uh, interviews he had a few, few days ago. He wants to stay. He wants to continue to Barcelona. We have to see what happens with Aspilicueta because, of course, Barcelona want to sign Cesar Aspilicueta from Chelsea. They are in negotiation from Chelsea. They have a contract, uh, they sent a contract to the player, two-year deal with an option for future season since long time. So Aspilicueta is attracted by this Barcelona possibility. But at the same point, there is still no agreement between Barca and Chelsea. There are good discussions, good feelings around this deal, but still no final agreement. So this is why Aspilicueta could be a factor, but Serginho Dest wants to stay in Barcelona, wants to fight for his place at Barca. And so at the moment, everything is so quiet around Serginho. Oh, speaking of Barca and Chelsea, uh, you know both teams being linked with Jules Koundé. Uh, who's leading the race for the Frenchman at this moment in time? Well, at the moment, I would say Barca are really pushing on player side. They have very good relationship on player side. And so Barcelona have Koundé as the next big target after signing Rafinha, Lewandowski, Kessi and, uh, and Christensen. So Barcelona are really pushing on player side, but still no agreement with Sevilla. Chelsea, during the weekend, they restarted the contest with Koundé people uh, and with Koundé's camp. Let me say that last year, last summer, Koundé was one step away from joining Chelsea. So they always had good relationship with Koundé's camp. And they always kept this relationship also in the last few months. Then they decided to focus on Koulibaly as priority. But now it's a real battle between Barcelona and, uh, and Chelsea. Again, after Rafinha, it's time for Kunde. And Barcelona not, know that they have to be fast if they want to stay Kunde. They have to be fast in a proposal to, to Sevilla because Chelsea are restarting the contest. They are again in contact also with Sevilla. And so it's going to be an important week, I think, for, for Jules Kunde. Time for a quick break. When you're looking at a game that already doesn't have a lot of black women, and then you see Brianna Scurry, and you're just like, this is strange, but I'm liking it. And she's dominating. We're not turning back. Welcome back to Kegolessa, everybody. Now let's turn our attention to AC Milan, Fab, and Renato Sanchez. What's the latest there? We know that PSG have been looking at him. Uh, you know, is there any chance that, that Sanchez moves to Italy at this point? Not easy, not easy because Paris Saint Germain are still there. We know that Milan have been working on this one, as you mentioned, since long time. So he's always been top of the list for Milan. But also, they know that Paris Saint Germain are still in negotiations with Renato, with his agents, and with Lille. So at the moment, it's still PSG leading the race for, for Renato Sanchez. But AC Milan still hoping. Let me say that the real focus for, for AC Milan now is Charles de Kettler, this great talent from Bruges. He didn't play one single minute yesterday in the Super Cup with, uh, with Bruges. It means that they feel that the transfer could go through in the coming days. And so AC Milan are pushing. They are preparing a new proposal for the Kettler. And so he's the real priority for, uh, for Milan right now. And we've seen a lot of speculation about Elmas as well uh, when talking about uh, Milan. Is there, any, is there any truth in this link? At the moment, I have nothing on this one, honestly. I'm sorry for Peter, but I'm told that the focus for Milan is on different players. All right. Well, now we're going to move to the Choice is Clear presented by Gillette Clear Gel. And some big news coming out of uh, AC Milan this Monday is the fact that Zlatan Ibrahimovic has extended his contract for another year. Now, the choice, the the question that I'm putting to to you, Fab, is... uh, should Milan have kept Zlatan for another year? Was the choice clear for the club or not as clear as it sounds? Uh, in my opinion, absolutely clear because Ibrahimovic is not just a player. Uh, he's more than a player. You know so well in Paris the impact he had, but uh, wherever he's been, it's always been incredible with his impact. As Milan won the league last, uh, last season, also, thanks to Zlatan Ibrahimovic, not just to his goals, but to his impact with the young players into the dressing room, the poor leadership he has. So I think it's a very good decision. This is why AC Milan decided to reach an agreement with Zlatan for a contract in June 2023. Let me say for the club, it's a very good deal also in a financial point of view because Zlatan's salary will be 1 million euros 
net guaranteed for one year. Then there will be some add-ons, uh, of course, linked to his performances. So it will depend on how many goals Zlatan will score, how many minutes he will play, also because he's recovering from an injury. And so this is why it will take some time to see Zlatan back on the pitch. But at the same point, I think it's a very good news for Milan because Ibrahimovic is, is not just a player, he's a special player, he's a special person and really important into the dressing room. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think as well with Zlatan, uh, at this point in his career, I think he's almost now in a transition towards what he might be doing uh, after his football career away from the pitch. And this perhaps gives him a good opportunity to stay close to the team so that he can make his return to the pitch after his injury one more time. But also perhaps it gives him the first opportunity really in his career, sort of this close to what we assume will be the end of his playing career to actually work out if there's a role maybe that appeals to him uh, with the club. Do you think that it's logical that the Zlatan could perhaps stay on with AC Milan after his playing career in some sort of directorial role or something that's maybe a bit more hands-on for a character like Zlatan? I think that would be great, but I'm also told that when we had rumors of Zlatan maybe entering into the board or maybe taking care of the Raiola agency, uh, there was some rumor in the, in the last few months, of course, uh, the answer I always got on Ibrahimovic is that he doesn't know what he wants to do. He still wants to play football, so he's not even planning for his future. I think it would be great to see Zlatan as a director because he has very good idea, very good ideas, very good relationship with the people into the club. So Zlatan, as we mentioned before, he's special. He's not just a great player, but a great character into the club. But at the same point, I can guarantee that at the moment Zlatan is absolutely not thinking about the future. It's only about the present. It's only about playing football and winning the league again and playing the Champions League at top level again. So this is what Zlatan wants. Well, fingers crossed that Zlatan makes a swift recovery and can get himself back on the pitch. Now, I see that there's a lot of Arsenal fans in the chat, so we're going to zip ahead and start talking about the Gunners now. Zinchenko to, to Arsenal, what's the, the latest on this situation, Fab? Yes, it's really close. It's really close. Uh, as I mentioned a few days ago, there is an agreement uh, in principle between Arsenal and Manchester City for £30 million, pounds, but they need to reach an agreement with player. Zinchenko is keen on joining Arsenal, eh? so there is no problem on the player ideas, but it's about the contract, land of contract, the salary, so there are some details to clarify between all the parties before it, it, will, be, it will be completed, but there are very good chances, so this is an important week for Zinchenko to Arsenal, and about Tillemans is still the same. The interest is still there, but Arsenal have different priorities now so we have to wait a bit and then see if they will jump into it again or not because they never submitted a proposal for uh, for Tillemans interest yes it's always been important player in the list for Edu but never been close to join Arsenal yet is there a possibility that Tillemans might be picked up by another club uh, if he doesn't go to Arsenal I think yes I think yes, absolutely. You know, because Arsenal are waiting and waiting and waiting, and they know that when you wait too much on a player, you have the chance to see other clubs trying to hijack the move, to jump into it and make a proposal to the player. So I think they know that there is this possibility. So everything is absolutely open for Tillemans as of today. All right, well, from one London club to another, let's go to West Ham now and have a look at Armando Broja uh, and ha how that deal might be progressing. Yeah, the discussion for, for Broya today was really important, important day, because West Ham submitted a new proposal for, uh, for Armando Broya. It's £30 million guaranteed to, to Chelsea, so the proposal has been submitted and they are still waiting for him to answer, so for, uh, for, for Chelsea to, to answer, for Todd Bowley to answer together with Thomas Tuchel, because Thomas Tuchel is a big fan of Armando Broya, and this is one uh, of the points to discuss internally at Chelsea before accepting the, the proposal. The player has an agreement on personal terms with West Ham, so he would be happy to go and to have this chance to be the star of the team uh, in attacking position, and so I'm sure that the conversation will continue, but West Ham are pretty confident on, on Armando Broya. And looking at some of Chelsea's other business, I mean, we've spoken about Presnel Kimpembe potentially going to Chelsea before. Um, it's a it's a funny one because PSG are not necessarily absolutely convinced they want to sell him, but also at the same time, he's one of the players that they'd actually field offers for. That's the situation, or that was the situation last time we talked. What, any updates there on uh, Kimpembe and whether Chelsea really have a, a genuine shot at this or not? Yes, Chelsea are working on this. Chelsea are working on this. They are preparing a proposal. They are in discussion with Paris Saint-Germain. Of course, as you mentioned, PSG are open to letting go, but are not desperate to letting go. So it has to be a very good proposal or they would be happy to keep uh, Kim Pembe uh, in the team. So it's also what Galtier said to the keep a few days ago. The idea is to continue with him, but it depends on the proposal. So it's now up to Chelsea. 
And my feeling is that Chelsea will push and push again for Kim Pembe in the coming days. They need a left-footed centre-back, and this is what they want to do, to go for Kim Pembe, to submit a proposal and try to find an agreement with, with Paris Saint-Germain. So I think this deal is absolutely on, and also the deal for, uh, for Kunde. And a quick one on James Madison to, to Spurs. Any, any updates on that? At the moment, no updates. Tottenham are, um, are working on completing the deal for Jess Pence. It's a done deal. They just need to announce in the, coming, uh, in the coming hours. And then they will decide on the market, depending on what happens with the outgoings. They have many players to discuss on the outgoings, like Harry Winks. Uh, let's see what happens with Region. There are many players to, to discuss at uh, Tottenham, discussing about the departures, also Lo Celso, Nombele. So there are many things to clarify before maybe rejumping on the market with opportunities. All right, well, let's finish up today's chat in Yorkshire. Not something I thought I'd find myself saying, but it's absolutely roasting here in Paris. So I pray for a return to, to Northern England. And now, so we've got some questions uh, regarding Leeds business. Uh, I'll allow you to, uh, to to field it, Fab. Kelly Moindo, I'm Martin Terrier. So both uh, sort of in my neck of the woods here in, uh, in Ligue 1. Any updates on them? Calimundo has always been one of the players in the list. Let's see if Leeds decide to jump into it again because then they focused. They wanted him one month ago. Then they focused on Charles de Kettler. But now Milan are reading Leeds over here. So Leeds are waiting to see what happens with the Kettler. If the player is joining Milan as it seems, they will move on different targets. Calimundo would be one of them. But I see Leeds signing one more player, one more striker, I would say. They already signed many players. Eh? We have to mention that, that Rizzani Orta did many many deals this summer so they just need maybe something in attacking position and this will be the last one for for Leeds this summer probably and anything on Terrier uh, I know that he was looked at by Spurs earlier in the window as well yes many clubs are tracking him are following him very good talent but at the moment still nothing close to be completed so I think his name we have to monitor maybe in August could be an opportunity once the domino continues all right. Thanks a lot for joining me, Fab. It's been an absolute pleasure. I hope it's not as roasting with you in Italy as it, uh, as it, it is, is it here is. in France. For, it is. <laughs> well, finger, fingers crossed that it, uh, it cools down for both of us. Any final thoughts, any transfers you've got your eye on for the, for the coming days? I'm working on Bremer. I would keep an eye on this, the centre-backs, Dominos, and Bremer, Torino player, very good player. There is now a fight between Inter and Juventus for Bremer. Juventus are trying to hijack the deal. Inter are working on it since a long time. And so today is an important day for Bremer. Let's see what happens with Inter and with Juventus trying to sign him. All right. Thanks so much for listening to Kegel Lasso. Please take a minute to nominate us for Best Podcast in the People's Choice Podcast Awards. Link in the description. And we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen to podcasts. We're also available as video. So subscribe to us on YouTube. Visit youtube.com forward slash Kegel Lasso. Until next time, it's goodbye. <laughs>